sorry this session i see a mixed audience here this session is aimed at younger lot let me start with the first bit this is how to be safe and smart with your money okay and uh, some of the questions no seniors are going to answer right because you are supposed to know some of the answers to what i'm going to ask so how do you uh, you know ensure that you're safe with your money the way we've structured this session is in two parts one is i talk about safety devashish talks about where to invest your money and since the net and mobile phones play such an important part in our lives there is a session by uh, yogesh sapkali our deputy editor who's going to do a short 5 to 7 minutes on passwords and believe me it's quite eye opening this lot that i didn't know when i heard it the first time and he is a tech person so this is what we've got for you today so first you have to learn how to be scam smart okay i think that's the key to anything that you want to do because anywhere you go there is someone or the other trying to scam you of the money that you have and if you don't keep your money safe then nothing else matters because you're going to work you're going to earn and it's all going to just vanish because you don't know what uh, you're doing with it let me ask a question do you guys think that if you're really smart it's difficult if you are automatically scam smart no so if you're a doctor or an ib and the bad engineer you think it's difficult to fool you no you think all of everyone's equally fooled really okay i thought people are going to say you have to study hard become an ias officer then nobody can cheat you no such thing huh okay good to know i that means a lot of sensible people in this room because what what we are going to show you from research is that smart people are actually easier to cheat and most likely to be defrauded you know why they probably think they're so damn smart that nobody is cleverer than them and nobody can take them for a ride but the numbers are huge you know there are different kinds of scams called the advance fee scam and i'm going to come to some of them later and it is the really smart guys who go and put their money there because they're too busy earning it and they don't mind how they write checks and they're losing it just as fast as they earn it so being smart is not a qualification okay the best example of course is this lady doctor from right here in dadar this is an article that appeared in uh, the mumbai mirror not very long ago and this is a doctor called usha mehta and i don't know if all of you can read this but i'll quickly tell you what she did she a bunch of goons came and told her that if you have a currency note they had this extraordinary chemical and they're going to put four pieces of uh, currency size paper together and put the chemical on it and one currency note would quadruple into four and they showed it to her she believed it and they said that it's an expensive treatment so they, she gave them a 2 lakh advance and they said they're going to import this chemical from nepal and she believed it then they said you know since it's all such an expensive process we need to quadruple a huge amount of money so she took 25 lakhs in cash went with them to lonavla okay and there of course they pulled the fast one on her then she went and filed a police complaint and as you can see from the pictures the goons were arrested now was the doctor right to complain to the police all of you said yes right what should have happened in this case do you know that to own fake currency and to try and duplicate currency to counterfeit currency is a crime under the ipc okay and she should have gone to jail in fact it is the cops should have caught her and i keep saying that this is where smart people act idiotic first of all it's a woman she's going to lonavla she's got 25 lakh in cash she's lucky we've known people who've been killed for much less than 25 lakhs right she's still alive to go and complain what she's doing is illegal and one of the reasons why those guys dared to do it is that they told her in any case it's black money okay so she doesn't get caught by the income tax the police don't put her in jail for trying to counterfeit currency instead they're going and catching her. i'm not saying those goons shouldn't have been caught they should have been but this woman should have been behind bars first i mean you know it's easy money you earn you know lots of 
smart doctors run a cash machine and are collecting cash all the time but you know it's not reported and it is completely illegal to own counterfeit currency it is uh, using forged or counterfeit banknotes as genuine making or possessing instruments or material for forging or counterfeiting banknotes or making or using documents resembling banknotes are offenses under section 4 uh, 89A to 489E of the Indian Penal Code and are punishable by a fine or imprisonment that can go up to 7 years okay so this is what should have happened to that woman and i think that this brings us to the next part which is how easy or difficult is it to counterfeit currency does anyone want to tell me is it easy to put it on four pieces of paper and if not why not and i'm going to ask the youngsters here do you know what are the security features on the currency note Right or wrong, but uh, I went in a mall and uh, there I gave that guy a 500 rupee note, and uh, he inserted that note in a machine where uh, there was some mark in color. Not some mark. You have to tell me what mark. That I don't. <laughs> okay, so then you don't get it. Anyone else? No. Okay. So I think what we need to do very clearly is to show you what you need to know about currency because. fake and forged currency possessing it is a crime and there is huge amounts of fake currency in india so if you have it with you it's not an issue but if you have it with you the best thing you can do is go to a bank and report it sometimes you need to write an fir but if you try to pass it off the minute you try to pass off a currency as genuine that becomes a criminal offense and can land you in jail and there are even sometimes you get currency notes from atms and banks that are not correct and at least a basic of four or five of the security features is something that you need to know i mean i know that when you go and pay bills the petrol pump those guys lift up the note and you know they super geniuses seem to know everything instantly you may not be that quick but you need to know a few of them so i'm going to show it to you the currency that you handle in india is called bank note Did you know that the genuine Indian banknotes that you use in every transaction have some unique features called security features? Identifying a genuine banknote is not very difficult. Just follow some simple rule: touch, feel, tilt and see. Run your fingers over the banknotes. In all banknotes of rupees 20 and higher denominations, you can touch and find out that certain portions are in raised print. Portrait of Mahatma Gandhi, Reserve Bank Seal, Guarantee and Promise Clause, Ashoka Pillar Emblem, the Governor's Signature on the obverse of the note. They all have raised printing. All bank notes of rupees twenty and higher denominations also have a unique identification mark on the left front side of the notes. This mark is to help the visually impaired to recognize the denominations by merely touching it. Vertical rectangle on rupee twenty, square on rupee fifty, triangle on rupee hundred, circle on rupee five hundred, diamond on rupee thousand. Bank notes make a unique crackling sound because they are made off from a special paper made of hundred percent cotton and cotton rag. A plain paper will not make this sound. Tilt. Rupees twenty and higher denominations banknotes have a latent or a hidden image. The latent image of the denominational numeral of the banknote is printed in the vertical band behind the Mahatma Gandhi portrait on the front. You can also notice the change in color of the denominational numerals printed on the obverse of banknotes of rupees thousand and rupees five hundred. The numerals look green or blue depending on the angle you view them from. security thread similarly in rupees 100 rupees 500 and rupees 1000 banknotes the security thread also changes color from green to blue when the banknote is tilted and seen from different angles if you see the notes closely you can observe a thread running across the width of the banknote the thread is either fully embedded or partially windowed from the front depending upon the denominations seen from the back The thread appears as a continuous line. Rupees thousand denomination banknotes also have the numeral thousand written in the thread. 
There is a small floral design on the left of the watermark window in the front and back of the banknotes. This design looks different from front and back. Look closer. You can actually see the numeral of the banknote in the design. Hold it against light and you will see a single design and a full numeral. The portrait of Mahatma Gandhi appears in the watermark window of all banknotes. In the latest series banknotes, one can also see the denomination and numeral in vertical position. The new design notes also denote the year of printing on the reverse of the banknote. Each and every one have to know what one should not do on banknotes. Do not write on the banknotes. Do not dirty the banknotes. Try not to fold the banknotes. Do not staple the banknotes. Use rubber or paper band instead. So interesting, isn't it? You hold up the note and bend it a little bit, you can at least see four security features. And forget about somebody using a chemical and duplicating them. Today, you have fake currency that uses the same security paper. So it's difficult to figure out. It's not possible to do it with any other paper. Today, you also have the same ink. The ink is imported from Switzerland. It's not even manufactured in India. And it is virtually a monopoly. The government of India now wants to start doing it in India, in Bangalore. But it is pretty tough. And that's why some of the fake and forged notes that you will find have many of the security features. And the Reserve Bank of India spends a lot of time improving it. Okay. So what they have done now is they've said currency notes which do not have a certain feature are being discontinued by the Reserve Bank of India, which is going on just now. They've said those notes have to be returned. So what is wrong with this note that I have put up here? That's also not available, right? So one and two rupee notes are not printed anymore. And do you know that the one rupee note is the only one which is not signed by the Reserve Bank Governor, it's signed by the Finance Secretary. And why do they not print these notes? Because the cost, we Indians are so dirty about how we use them that they get soiled and destroyed so rapidly that the government can't afford to print one and two rupee notes. And I think they're going to, even the five rupee notes, they're going to discontinue. You still have uh, a few 20, but I think, and 10, but below that, the government finds it difficult, which is another reason why so much of time and effort in educating people on how to use your currency and how much much of an effort goes into printing that currency. So it's not a simple thing. There is, it is expensive and we need to treat it with care, not just because it buys you stuff. So now that we have the currency and we're not going to be fooled like the doctor is, let's look at some guiding principles on how to be safe with your money. Okay. Base level is one simple sentence. If it seems too good to be true, it usually is. Okay. If you keep that in mind, you're going to be saving yourselves from a lot of scams. And the reason why you need to keep it in mind is because the human mind is made in a particular way. Even after so many years of evolution, the human mind is not developed enough to understand risk in financial markets. We understand risk as a, you know, you see a tiger, the entire body's chemical reactions are there, the adrenaline starts pumping and you take flight. But when it comes to money, the body still does not react like this. The mind doesn't react. We are not geared to understand financial risk. And it is nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, research shows that ordinary people are not hardwired, as they call it, to understand financial products. And a lot of us feel if we don't understand numbers, we should feel embarrassed. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Most people don't understand it. There are only That's why there's a small, minuscule number of PhDs in mathematics who come and you know work on things like derivatives and financial products and you know it's a very specialized area because not everyone does it this lack of core understanding is so widespread that you had this big global financial crisis in 2008 where once you looked back you wondered whether people had shut off their brains because they were buying products that on the face of it in retrospect hindsight looked like they're completely safe in India also, you had a whole exchange, National Spot Exchange collapsing, and everybody is so upset afterwards. But when they were trading there, they were happy enough to hear their brokers say, Ye to 
सेफ है कुछ नहीं होगा गारंटी है दे डिट डू एनी रिसर्च एंड दे डिट बॉदर टू चेक द एंटीसीडेंट एंड इट्स एंटायर एक्सचेंज एज रिसेंटली एज अ कपल ऑफ इयर्स अगो दैट्स गॉन बस्ट वॉट एल्स हैपन्स वाई डू वी गेट फूल्ड बिकॉज we transfer our experiences of buying consumer products to financial products so you buy a toaster you buy a mobile phone or you buy a television what do you do you bring it home unpack it plug it in starts working right so you think that that's all you need to do with a financial product as well if you are extra careful what do you say i don't mind paying more for an iphone right so you think i'm paying more it has to be safer it has to give you more features or you choose between a better brand or a cheaper brand you'll say i don't buy chinese products and you think you've done a smart thing in when you're buying consumer goods fair enough it's a correct thing when it comes to financial products brands don't matter okay so for instance you buy a lamborghini there are going to be distinctly more features than if you buy a tata nano right both are great companies big brand names but there's a huge difference if you go to the financial market whether you go to a city bank or you go to a cooperative bank other than the ambiance and maybe the coffee that they give you there is not much of a difference in how the products will perform okay so for instance you buy a mutual fund someone says you know when you're buying a car they say can't you test drive it before deciding can you test drive a mutual fund no right any investment that you make you're putting your money up front and the results will be known at best one year down the line right so what do you do you try and look at a brand so you say like i said that it's apple or samsung you can make a choice you pay more money there's a difference but whether it's an hsbc or it's an amex or it's a good old indian nationalized bank there is no difference in the likely financial results that you're going to get so the laws of the consumer world do not apply to the financial world what is worse is that everybody is constantly pitching at you everyone has a sales pitch Okay, so you have companies; they need to sell products, so they have this massive advertising every day, which only talks about the good qualities, hides everything that can go wrong, because that's what they're doing. They want to sell the product, right? They are in the market for it. Companies, they're going public; they want to raise money from you; they want to invest. They are all dressed up to convince you that they're going to perform brilliantly in the next few years, and you're going to put in your money. What does media do? Most of media depends on advertising, right? So there's enormous pressure these days not to write the bad things about companies, not to analyze too much, and so media is also indirectly pitching at you by telling you only the good stuff. What are intermediaries doing? They earn a commission. So you, as an individual, who's going to sign your checkbook or who's going to make an investment, has to cut through all of this. and zone in on what the real facts are okay and here i am telling you it's not easy because it's not easy for us to understand financial products you know it's okay to say buy or beware but none of us our mind zones out when we are going to look at uh, the small print so one of the things that we say and you'll hear more about it in the next session is that choose a few safe and smart products 80 to 90% of what is pitched at you in the financial market is not required at all you don't need it it is downright unsafe for you in fact the biggest picture pitchers in the market selling you stuff are these guys i mean i'm a big fan of all three okay make no mistake about that sachin tendulkar is god amitabh bachchan is the greatest superstar there is and i don't think i've seen a more brilliant actor than irfan but that is a problem when they start selling financial products they actually convince you okay and we have done research and homework here at money life to say that nothing that they sell these three ads represent three insurance products so you have sachin tendulkar selling a child insurance plan and we have discovered that there are whole villages where everybody bought a child plan not even knowing how to recover it and we think they are extremely expensive so you have amitabh bachchan here who tells the two security guys first do minute you're not insured oh my god just 2 minutes like maggi noodles right 
and it's not true it takes hours before you understand what insurance is good for you in fact it takes so long that in money life foundation for the first year that we started we refused to do any seminar or any work on insurance because we ourselves were not sure we were studying and studying and studying financial products how many people make payments in time and we didn't have the confidence to hold seminars the last one come insurance lene ki bimari he says buy more insurance so we you know our insurance expert raj pradhan did some number crunching and he went and looked at this company and he discovered that this company had the highest rate of rejecting insurance claims okay so jada insurance lo jada premium bharo and get more rejections which means that your money is gone down the tube so bottom line i'm not teaching you insurance here but if anything looks like too much of a sales pitch be wary if anything looks too good to be true think twice and the time when you get fooled the most is you know uh, this pamnani started investing in the market very early and she was very lucky but the time that you get fooled the most is when the sensex is booming okay because every fool looks like a genius everybody is exchanging stock tips and everyone is celebrating every 1000 point rally i think this was 10000 being celebrated and now you have 20000 so this is the time when people actually walk around around with their checkbook say aap mujhe bolo jo bhi karoge and i used to cover the market i had a friend who used to tell me whatever you buy but he wanted me to put my money in okay and i kept telling him as a journalist i'm not supposed to buy the stocks that i write about and he would say you buy 50 and i i also used to tell him i don't have your kind of money so he says if you buy 10 i'll buy 10000 and i said i don't i don't even have 10 rupees to you know invest in stocks because i'm busy paying back a housing loan but this is what people do they don't care who it is it could be a reporter it could be someone like me who is you know two years into journalism at that stage but people are ready to believe you why because the market is booming and they think you have inside information how do people get cheated when you look at the examples okay so everything you will look at the net and everything comes with a guarantee 100% return best buy and then there is these two people here bunty and bubbly i call them they floated a company called stock guru raised 1000 crores they used to go change they used to go in disguise change their names and personalities they carried on like this for more than 2 years before they were caught and by then of course they had walloped 1000 crores of public money and then this every housewife with 3 hours free in the afternoon suddenly is a trading genius because she's done some short course paid 1 lakh of rupees for it gets tips every morning and i had friends who don't even have a nodding acquaintance with the market i asked them what you doing these days and they say i'm trading on the market and they're trading oil futures and they're trading commodities and there was one lady who i was so shocked i said oil futures and you know she said a chartered accountant came up to her and said aunty kuch nahi karna hai she sold a flat aap mujhe paisa de do main aapka laga dunga look at the way oil prices are going up and oil prices crashed you will hear more of it in the you know next session and this lady had to pay capital gains she had sold a flat there was no money and she and her daughter come and do a big session with me crying in tears and i said but how did you invest in oil futures even i've covered the markets those days for 25 years i don't have the foggiest notion but you had the confidence to give lakhs of rupees to it and i said didn't you see anything that they gave you some pieces of paper some returns the guy is calling so standard rule when the market's going up he would this young guy would call up and say aunty aapko pata hai aaj aapne kitna paisa banaya and he would give her a number and then one fine day he stopped calling it was so routine and she didn't realize that he's not calling anymore because she didn't so much as look at the oil prices every day see today we are in a free market where i think everybody knows by their petrol rates whether oil prices are up or down because you're going to pay a difference those days it didn't matter it was government controlled as little as 3 4 years ago this i'm talking about 2007 when this happened so she didn't know what the oil prices were and the guy stopped calling and one fine day when she uh, tries to call him his number has changed and then they begin to investigate and find that about 30 to 40 lakh rupees are gone a doctor in the other 8 crores not a small amount trusted it with the broker broker fooled around in the market it's all gone 
who are these guys who sell you this stuff? You know, common name for them, it's a very American coinage, confidence tri- tricksters. Because they, you know, win your confidence and then once they have won your confidence, they can sell you anything. Right? So anyone on the internet, anyone can think about these scams. Give me some examples. Do you know? I've written a whole lot of them. Job scams, lottery scams, the Nigerian scam, inheritance scam. Anyone knows any examples? Yeah, you receive a mail, I mean, either from an uh, African country, which says that I am the loan person uh, having so-and-so property with oil listings. The government or the opposition is going to be, Correct. is behind me to uh, confiscate my things. And I need, a, I need a, a passage to pass on this um, uh, inheritance amount, so-and-so. Correct. So just please send your details right. uh, whereby I could have things. Okay, one more. Uh, usually all these mails come in the junk mail. For uh, most of the other things. Smart. So, yeah. You know, I thought you youngsters would know more of these scams than we do. And I thought we are the ones who get fooled by it. And you haven't heard of them. What happens in your mailboxes? They're all on email, right? You don't get them? You get the lottery scams. But how come you didn't answer it? Because it is spam. You Oh, but you missed your chance of getting a chocolate because you didn't answer it. So what? It all goes into your spam boxes. Yeah? Seriously? Lucky you. I mean, they hear of people who are losing lakhs of rupees because they go and reply to it. But let me run you through some of them. The others that I'm going to talk, before I come to the lottery scams, I'm going to do the chain money, pyramid and whatever. And the number, when I say people get fooled, look at the numbers I'm talking about. Pearls is a company which said we are going to buy pieces of land for you. In fact, now a two-judge committee has been set up to decide. They raised 35,000 crore. Okay. QNET is still going on. Anyone knows about QNET? Nobody goes to baristas and uh, cafe coffee days? I believe any time I, I've seen it myself, there is someone or the other hard selling it and they say you deposit some 10,000 bucks or 20,000 bucks and you know, you buy some numismatic coins and then you go and hawk it to others and you get to return, you know, get your money back at the rate of some 35-40%. Speak Asia. Now, all of you too young for Speak Asia also? Do you remember what that was? It was a survey, you had to buy an identity for which you paid some uh, 10,000 bucks each and you had to fill out surveys every day and the surveys were absolutely childish and there were 10 questions and if you fill them out they said these were surveys for companies that they were doing and they paid you 500 bucks so you buy one identity and you're you're able to fill out one survey a day which is 500 you introduce two more people you get another 500 you get more than two you get another 500 so your 10,000 sort of comes back in less than a week and then you keep doing the surveys and you're feeling very very rich and the money actually used to be sent to you city limousine is another guy who produced you know on one hand very patriotic he used to he produced a movie called chakte india which all of us you know went and saw and this guy used to give a return of i think over 120 percent for two years before he went bust and this is the story of all these scams. Now, this is City Limousine. The guy has finally been arrested, or I think like Salman Khan, he's not faced too much of a jail term. But every time the scam fools people, they say, it can't happen to us. And, you know, why can't it happen to us? Because, you know, my neighbor is an income tax guy. He won't be fooled, right? Even though I don't know it, he will know and he's invested. Or they won't take a policeman for a ride, isn't it? So my, the cop next door has invent, uh, invested, so I have. And you know, when it goes bust, look at it, 6,000 policemen, 200 income tax officers, 15 RBI guys, 300 from Mantrale. That means everybody who should have stopped the scam was actually invested in it. And I'll tell you what happens when it actually goes bust. These people are the first to get their money out. They lock the guy, give him the third degree. They say, Mera paisa pehle wapas do. I told you about the stock guru scam. I know it was a thousand crore scam. The day he was arrested, suddenly the paper starts saying it was a 500 crore scam. So you know 500 crore, all the guys who have connections, get it back. You and me, don't. And those of us who have got money, like Speak Asia, I remember doing this seminar. We broke that story and I was doing a seminar right here and there was this lady who told me my granddaughter has got four identities. Are you saying that it's not okay? 
okay i'm going to have to tell her lots of people didn't believe us they kept abusing us by writing nasty messages on our website finally when it went bust why did they not believe us simple reason mujhe paisa mila you know so you guys are lying because i've got a check in fact in a pyramid scam you getting a check is the modus operandi it is basic because if you get a check which gives you a 100% return or gives you even a 35% return what are you likely to do you're going to be convinced you will say oh fantastic these guys are genuine i got my money i got it in 3 months so if you have a fixed deposit in a bank you withdraw that and you put that money in also so when it actually goes bust your entire saving is wiped out not only that you've lost all your friends because you've gone and hard sold it suddenly you are the person with a check you're walking around strutting around you're convincing everybody that this is genuine and all your friends are also invested when it actually goes bust so bottom line again if it's too good to be true it usually is and this applies to every scheme which says you'll get a high return but you have to introduce two more people so So anyone who gives you this fantastic return they always have a catch it has to form a chain or it has to form a pyramid because otherwise they don't make money when the pyramid is big enough so they give you your money to create confidence okay so they are creating this is how the confidence tricksters work you then bring four more people and the pyramid grows and grows and grows when it is large enough that they have they are paying out far less than what they are collecting that's the time they up and run and the same set of people keep coming back with different names different identities and this is not me saying it this is the cops who have told us and they come back they come with different kinds of schemes and they are out fooling you over and over again and this happens around the world it's not unique to india in fact this is on the fbi website and a lot of countries have written a list of them singapore australia china canada japan malaysia all of them ban what is called the binary one where they talk about a left hand and a right hand they call you for these meetings where they say come only with a checkbook dinner is on us and they virtually hypnotize you into believing that you are going to be a multimillionaire in no time by hawking something like numismatic coins bracelets you know travel holidays and stuff like that and it while these are banned what they say is it's mathematically unsustainable you do the numbers and when the base becomes large enough you know by their calculations it usually covers the entire population in the world it's not workable and it does not work it doesn't have to work that is why it's a scam because they up and run okay and they come up with something else The Nigerian scam as someone pointed out it's always about some dictator's widow who's writing to you and saying that my husband stashed away this money which is always 10 million 25 million and above and here it is i want to move it out of my country and why you never even wait to say why me you know who told you that i am this honest guy or this crooked guy who is going to help you transfer the money but i have known people who have lost as much as 35 lakhs in falling for this and they lure you bit by bit it's like you know catching fish because they first ask you an advance fee you know everything is going to be done we just short of we need some permissions so it may start with as little as 200 bucks so you pay that they know they've got you on the hook then they'll say oh there's some other panic calamity i need another 5000 bucks but it's right here it's going to come through a diplomatic bag to you and they calling you up and they're very convincing believe me they do all the paperwork in fact they even tell you that you can get money from the reserve bank of india so what i'm writing here is not i'm not fooling in fact forget about rbi governor subarao there are mails going out even in the name of raguram rajan saying that there's an escrow account in fact if any of you get an email from raguram rajan i have one he has a signature at the bottom which says the reserve bank of india does not have escrow accounts we do not give money to anybody if you get mails don't get fooled by it. this is a standard line on his signature <laughs> same with uh, the governor of the previous governor subara and they create this mail fully with the rbi emblem it's extremely genuine looking full of legalese so it sounds again like it you know it's written by a central bank and ramalinga raju i mean i didn't even know what his wife's name was okay and 
when I got this mail, which came out in the Satyam uh, owner's name, I said, I must check this out to find out whether it really is her name. And I find they do their homework. It was, the name was correct. So, like I said, when they're doing this, confidence tricksters do a lot of homework. They're very clever guys and they know how to lure you in. We had an answer on the job scam where someone said, so these are not small companies, they're huge companies, Siemens, TCS, Kotak, ICICI Bank, uh, Thomson, Reuters, all of them at some time or the other put out ads in the paper saying, please don't fall for this. These are companies that usually do campus interviews, okay? They're not going to call up and say, pay 10,000 rupees or pay your airfare and I will reimburse you afterwards. This is not how they hire people. But every single day, there are people falling for it and I know of a case which was reported in the Times of India where somebody in UP decided he's got a job with Microsoft because he was speaking to these agents. He had paid that money and his parents even fed half the village because their son was going to work in Microsoft. They didn't even pause to say, what has he done? Did he even go for an interview? No. And then they, everyone runs to the police and expect, you know, expect them to sort it out when you have been stupid, right? So, Again, I keep coming back to it. If it seems too good to be true, it usually is, right? So we come to the next, phishing and wishing, right? Phishing is when you get these emails. Your account is going to be suspended. You know, your account is going to be closed out if you don't verify by putting in your email and password. And people are falling for it all the time. I don't think you youngsters fall for it. I hope not, okay? I thought, you know, all of us who got into computers late are the ones who fall for it. But it is so very rampant. It's happening now all the time. And there are three things that give you identity. It's usually your PIN, your password, and some kind of verification. And once you've given away one or two, it's so easy to guess the third. And, you know, we keep saying that KYC is such a pain. Know your customer rules because you're supposed to give all kinds of proof. But when it's put together and handed on a platter to a scamster, it can just wipe out your account. Now, what is wishing? Wishing is the same thing as phishing, except that happens on email. Wishing happens on the phone. So somebody calls you up and in their best call center voice will say, uh, Sir, I'm calling from ICICI Bank and uh, we are doing a verification because we've had some problems in the system. So you'll get a call from my office in another 10 minutes. Please don't worry. It's a genuine call. And, you know, please give your uh, PIN and uh, details when they ask for it. So you're mentally prepared. This is how they work, to work on your mind. And 10 minutes later, when the call comes, it again, these are trained people. I keep saying that it's not easy to be a scamster, whether it was a Harshad Mehta scam or it is any of these scams. I used to keep saying you cannot be a scamster unless you are 10 steps ahead of what the cop is going to do, which means you're really, really smart. And the good one do a lot of homework and a lot of preparation. So the person who calls sounds like a banker, first of all. Then you're mentally prepared to get that call. So people blurt out their details. Okay. And five minutes later, you may know usually the transaction has happened and the money, you'll get an SMS saying, you know, 12,000 bucks or 20,000 bucks gone out of your account. And then you realize that you've been fooled. So wishing is in fact far deadlier because it targets more senior citizens who are not aware of the number of new things which are connected with technology. And a lot of these scams actually which are internet based or email based systematically target older people because they are not as comfortable. Right? While there are new ones like this one which are absolutely aimed at youngsters like you because we're all the time sending stuff on WhatsApp and on the uh, computer to friends and this apparently is a real video very very funny it's come from russia it said office monkeys lol now there's good chance that even if i had got something it says office monkeys lol and i'm bored i would click on it to say okay let me have a laugh in the afternoon right the video get, got passed around and the system was slowly getting infected in the background so large companies and their networked software was getting affected by this and this is a new thing that is happening because these are just viruses that are getting into your address books and are affecting computers and one of the most dangerous ones going where do you put it sorry you have a question i just wanted to share it like on facebook or like there are these links uh, 
if you click on them, they'll say I have found a video of you and stuff. If you click on it, it the won't get the video. Instead, it will be forwarded to all your friends. Yeah, that is a virus because it goes into your address book, okay? And it sends out that virus to everybody in your address book. In fact, the scam about I've got trapped in Paris and I've lost my passport and I've been robbed, that works through it because everyone in your address book gets a mail saying that you've got lost in Paris or in Spain or, you know, wherever else. And they say, send me whatever money you can on Western Union. And those, it's a very simple, luckily these are not very dangerous virus because all you need to do is change your password and tell your friends that, you know, your uh, address book is compromised. But all you need to do is change your password. But when I say that it, you know, affects senior citizens, I've known people who have discarded accounts because it's got infected. Don't need to worry. All you have to do is change the password. Same thing usually even on many of the Twitter ones, but they're getting better and better and more dangerous. So choosing a bank, simple lessons. Government banks are safe usually because they're government banks. Okay. So Sarkar takes care of you. Even if their net worth is fully eroded, the government is taking care of you. And luckily in India, 60% of our banking system is still government owned. All large private banks okay you get sms's don't run because they are usually safe you remember global trust bank i mean it wasn't even large but during the ketan parik scam 10 years ago government bailed out even that so no large bank is going to go under because it's a global thing too big to fail government steps in and don't allow anything to happen. Cooperative banks fail very, very regularly. One fails almost every month. So if any of you monitor RBI press releases, there is one cooperative bank going under and it usually is declared insolvent after two, three years of its net worth having eroded because it's governed by the Reserve Bank as well as the government and government cooperatives, notoriously political. They don't allow action. They don't allow a cleanup. They constantly siphoning of money they're under dual regulation and there's not much anybody can do and not much of fighting that anyone does so if it my hard-earned money i would stay away from a cooperative bank except to the extent of one lakh rupees because one lakh is insured but remember the day the guy stops paying the fixed deposit doesn't mean that you will say okay i'm insured Pera paisa do. doesn't happen the bank has to go into liquidation the rbi has to finally announce that it's dead which could take about two or three years and only then you get your insurance payment when you deal with banks also you need to learn that you have to be uh, careful about what you do ask a lot of questions don't feel embarrassed about it negotiate everything including rates and what you can get these days is negotiable search on the net for best deals loyalty is out of fashion if you search you get better deals better rates for everything better services put things in writing if you're unsure about anything that the bank has said verbally especially when relationship managers you know offer you starry deems put it down down in writing create a record because if you ever need to fight for something then having a record having asked a question is good enough for you to start a battle but if in writing you lose your money or you know you're charged a higher interest than what you heard the guy say you go and complain about it nothing's going to happen but if you have sent the person a mail saying let me understand this correctly i'm opening this account because you have promised me that i will get x or y interest rate and these are the terms then when that goes to the ombudsman that acts as proof and it helps you it, it's to your benefit and usually banks do not challenge it because banks also build for a certain amount of mis-selling uh, that happens from people and so when they know there's something in writing which they would have to defend they usually just pay up right get contacts don't only depend on the call center and we keep saying don't depend only on the relationship manager because they leave their jobs every three months so you need to know the name and number and email of at least one or two people senior to the relationship manager insurance i've already told you is a very very difficult area 
So luckily for us, as of today, the Prime Minister has launched these two schemes. Okay, And I keep saying a lot of you youngsters are going to go and study abroad, which means that your parents are going to take a risk on you. And it is a very good idea to have a basic accident insurance. You would be surprised, I mean, for parents in this room and youngsters in the room, I would suggest go back and tell your parents, get an accident insurance. And you know, this 12 rupees per annum is really a steal. 2 lakhs is not much. Many of you are going to pay 7 and 8 lakhs just as your MBA fees. But you can get a better accident insurance is pretty low cost. And as young people, you're going to go trekking, you're going to travel, you're going to do all kinds of fun things, right? So accidents are going to happen. And it's good to be insured not just for death, but even for physical disability. The next is, of course, the life insurance, which is useful both for you. Your life becomes valuable the minute someone pays a bomb to put you into an important school, Ivy League, B school, whatever, because there's so much of money riding on you, which goes off. So it's worth getting life insurance. And it, these are really low cost schemes. I'm going next to uh, credit cards. Okay, so. Do you need a credit card? And why am I talking about credit cards to youngsters? Because again, I'm assuming many of you bright people are going to go abroad. If you go abroad, you can't live without a credit card. And most people do not even know how it works. So you need to know just some basics. So let me start with, do you need a credit card at all? No? Debit card is fine. And who's going to put the money in the debit card that you're going to spend? Daddy. That means you have to wait till you earn and you have to wait until there's enough there and then you're going to spend only that, right? Anyone here who sees, says credit cards are not important? You guys are getting smart. You don't answer at all. It has to be yes or no, right? So what? Do you need a credit card again? Yes. 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 Absolutely. So you do need a credit card for the simple reason that there are certain situations in which you just can't ask anybody else for money. I keep saying you booked a Kingfisher flight and you've gone to Delhi. What do you do? Will someone at the airport give you money to come back? No, right? So if you have a credit card, you can at least buy another ticket and find a way to pay it back. So there's a family emergency. Do you rush the person to the hospital or do you go around first trying to borrow money to be able to admit them? So these are situations in which nothing helps but a credit card. Okay, And it makes sense to have a credit card in your pocket because it is useful. If you go abroad, you don't have a choice. In fact, for almost everything that you do, you will need a credit card. And if you don't have it, you virtually can't survive. At the same time, you have even the Dilbert comic saying credit cards are the crack cocaine of the financial world. Why do they say it? It becomes an addiction. Uh, yeah, one part is that you spend more than you earn and their entire advertising, if you look at the priceless campaign, is aimed at making you earn, spend more, right? But the truth is even worse, which is every time I ask people, what do you do when you have a credit card? Do you pay back everything? So it's useful to have. So you pay your bill in full, right? Most people do or you roll it over? Painful. painful, right? I'm going to tell you a little more about that later. But if you don't pay in full, this is what happens to you, which is every credit card will very prominently say pay only 15%. You can roll over the rest. So again, it's, you know, working on your mind. All you need to do is pay 15%. So lots of people say wonderful, you know, this month, so I'm going to pay next month. I'll pay 15%. The minute you do, in India, these are the kind of interest rates that kick in. 40% to 65%. This is not me saying none of the banks admit to charging you more than 30%. Okay? There are all kinds of charges that add up. And these are things that they admitted before the National Consumer Disputes Resolution Commission, where a case went up about usurious interest rates. We have a law in India against money lending and it has a cap of 40 percent but credit cards don't fall into it because they structure it in a way that it is well above that and they are not you know under the money lending act the minute you roll over credit 
you know why do you get a credit card because you get anywhere between 45 days to 60 days to pay the money right now what people don't remember is that it's not that i buy something today and i have 60 days of free period there is something called a billing cycle so if you pay in the middle of the billing you spend in the middle of a billing cycle or at the end of a billing cycle you have only that many days left in which to make the payment so there's no guaranteed 40 days or 60 days your bill can turn up within five days after you've gone and splurged on something which you cannot pay but again they love that situation because they're telling you pay 15 percent you know the rest of it hum hai na. so don't touch the card again if you have rolled it over okay because if you buy something again when you have a rollover then that 40 percent interest rate is on the whole amount not a small amount okay so you have no free period then if you withdraw cash the interest rate is on that day there is no free period because they consider it like a loan and earlier they used to advertise heavily that you can use a credit card like an atm card and withdraw money what they didn't tell you is that it becomes an instant loan which gets adjusted the last cash is always adjusted the last so idea is lure you to spend more now i'm going to show you a little video about what the contract was deliberately written to confuse you bait and switch bingo Promise one thing, say 0% interest, then they up it to 30%. Bingo! But isn't that illegal? Used to be. Used to have usury laws, but the states wanted the credit card business, so poof, gone. Bingo. Ever inquire about a car loan? Uh, actually, yes, once. Bingo! But I didn't buy the car. It doesn't matter. It's called universal default. Credit bureaus share your information, all of it. Your credit card company just heard about your asking for a car loan. Bingo! They raise your rates. Why? Because they can. Why doesn't he move his hand? OCC is supposed to police. They don't. Bought off by the credit card lobbyists. May I ask, you spoke of honoring obligations as if it's a good thing. Indeed I did. Then why do you and other credit card companies refer to the customers who pay off their debts promptly as deadbeats? Well, that's not a term I would personally use. No, because you're swell. But your company uses a term like a mantra. Saw that? So those of us who pay our bills on time are called deadbeats because the credit card companies are not interested in us because they make no money on people like us who pay the bill in time. In fact, we are a cost to them, you know. Even sending you your monthly statement and that card is a cost to them. You are their favored customer the minute you cannot pay and you roll over because then you're paying high interest rates. They love guys who overspend. They love rich guys who overspend because then you're not going to turn a defaulter. All this information goes to a credit bureau. Some parts of it are not yet happening in India, which is that when you have this outstanding loan, if you even inquire for a car loan, doesn't matter that you haven't got it, your uh, interest rate goes up. We are lucky, we are not getting there, but believe me, we import everything from abroad, and it, if we are not careful, it's a matter of time before we get there as well. And how does this affect you? Do you know that Suresh Prabhu, the minister, was listed as a defaulter in the credit bureau? And you know why? I'm not even going to frame this as a question. Because he had a phone that he bought for his son. The son went abroad. The phone kept lying somewhere. They forgot to pay the bill. And this gets reported to a credit bureau. So the credit bureau must have chased the son. And, sorry? Credit rating scale. Yeah, so they kept chasing the son. They probably didn't reach up to the father, but they reported the father to the credit bureau. When he went to get a credit card, he discovered, sorry, no can do, because you are a defaulter. Now, what does this mean? You know, every one of us who has ever got a credit card or a borrowing, everything that we do becomes part of our credit history. Our lenders reported to organizations called credit bureaus. There are four of them in India. The Sybil, which everyone knows, Experian, Equifax, and the Scriff Highmark. So every bit of your spending, including, like that lady said, I only looked for a car loan. Even that is reported. And if you are a defaulter, that also goes into it. So it affects, the, all this is then a mathematical algorithm translates into it into one number, which is called your credit score. So if you 
have huge amount of outstanding and you're looking for loans which are being turned down or whatever or your you know couple of people say no because they're not sure you can pay that affects your credit score now this affects people in India because you are declared a defaulter for seven years you can't get even a credit card and I'm saying this though you are young because all of you have mobile phones right and those bills get reflected over here and all of these companies are working non-stop to get more and more utility bills and other details added in here and if you are a defaulter they go after you there was a time in the you know early 2000 when lots of students used to take credit cards take their ticket to go to the US on that credit card throw it in India knowing that nobody can trace them but the world has shrunk dramatically all these four companies have partners who are global companies and they are now tracking everything you do and so if you are here and you think you've gone abroad or you have a default abroad and you think you've come back to Bangalore and got a job, you're safe in India, believe me, you're being tracked. And if you have a default, they get it to you even through social media. In fact, this is the next thing that you should look at. Everything that you do on social media is being tracked by a whole lot of different people. One set of people are the recovery agents, and we've heard this from a top bank that we do our recoveries, we don't let them go. We are tracking them through Facebook, through Twitter. Doesn't matter where you are, they get at you. And everybody that is big enough today is international. HR heads. So you have written the you know biggest rubbish. You've written about your drinking binge, or you talked about how you went for a rave party and had great fun and posted photographs. When you apply for a job, the company hands this out to a software company whose job it is to research you. So your application goes to them. They're looking you up. They look at your LinkedIn profile. They look at Facebook. They look at Twitter. They search for you and they give a little report which the guys who are going to interview you, if, if they call you, they have it with them or they don't call you at all. So you have to, you can't say that. I mean, I feel sorry for you. You know, A lot of us when we were younger, nobody knew what we did, okay? <laughs> Just forgotten. But today, there's a record of it forever because everybody is taking selfies and posting them in seconds. I would urge you to think a little bit before you post anything onto social media and look at whether it's going to affect your life long term. It is getting very, very dangerous. And mistakes happen with all these lectures, having heard, you know, you can make mistakes, you can lose your job. If you do, don't start running. Go in for something called credit counseling. We at Money Life do it. We do it free. Don't run away from the lender talk to them find a way around it because you can't escape it okay and finally six mantras know your mind that's the most important see through a sales pitch avoid credit and investment traps focus on a few safe products maintain financial hygiene and be careful with disclosures on social media thank you